Hey everyone, my name is Adisha and welcome to Learn with Adisha. So, do you all like my new sword cursor? Pretty cool, huh? Anyways, I'm a Celsius guy, so I'll go with Celsius. Today, guess what we're learning? You can already see it. Ice, water, and vapor. What is this? Well, it's a state of matter course. Cool. Uh, let's choose... Yeah, this seems good. Anyways, let's get on with experimenting. So, what is the state of matter? What are the states of matter? There are three states of matter. The three basic states of matter, I mean. There are more. But we're not talking about them in this video. That's way too complex. Solid liquid and gas. Solid is basically this. It's solid. Liquid is like soda. It flows. And gas is something like bromine, air, oxygen. That kind of stuff. See that? That's a solid. But I think we should probably get into the atom parts of this. So now half of this is atoms, while the other half is, uh, whatever. So you see those dots inside that are constantly moving? Those are called molecules. They are basically building blocks of all uh, things, not all life, all things. Plastic has molecules in it, <laughs> bromine has molecules in it, anything has molecules in it if, it if it exists. For basic purposes, I mean. But, anyhow, this is a solid. A solid can't flow unless it is made of super small grains, like popcorn, or sand, or even pepper or salt, something like that. Whoa, that's a ton of popcorn, is it? It really is a ton of popcorn. But why did the popcorn pop? We'll find out about that later. Anyhow, we'll have to move on to the liquid section. That's honey. I don't really like honey. Soda? No thanks. Okay, whatever. Let's use soda. <laughs> Let's use soda as an example. So some liquids can actually be made out of different things. Some <laughs> ingredients in a liquid drink such as soda or or apple juice can be solid. I mean some, not all of it is solid. Anyhow, a liquid can uh, a liquid can flow, and they have different thicknesses. For example, slime or sludge would probably the, be the most thickest or viscous. Yes, that's the name we use, viscous. And the amount how thick it is is called viscosity. Oh, seems like we just froze it by accident. Let's thaw it. Or melt it. We'll get into all these changes later. Anyhow, let's go to... Oh, helium gas. It's flammable, but nice anyhow. This is negative 18 degrees Celsius. 
and it is still a gas. Somehow it is. And its boiling point is two hundred and seven is minus two hundred and seventy three degrees Celsius. Do not ask me how that is possible. Just don't. Gases can flow, contrary to popular belief. Most people think they can't flow, but they can. They actually can. Gases can flow. I'm not lying. But as you can see here, this is an example of a state change. What is a state change, you may ask? Well, a state change is when something changes from one state to another. For example, plastic. Oh, plastic doesn't really have any state changes. It just burns. Let's try gold. So I'm going to eject tons of gold out. Yes, seriously. I'm actually going to eject this amount of gold. That's a ton of gold, is it? Yeah, that's way too much gold. But we are going to have to melt all of it. Then freeze it. Now, we'll add in more gold. Hey, check it out. It's a tiny bop logo. That, that one's pretty rare. The state change from solid to liquid is called melting. The temperature at which this transformation starts to happen at any rate is called the melting or freezing point. That is because when you reach the melting or freezing point as a liquid, instead of melting, watch. Usually, instead of melting, it would start freezing below the melting point or freezing point this the liquid turns into a solid that's why it's called freezing freezing is melting in reverse melting is freezing in reverse freezing is the transformation of a so of a liquid to a solid and what's melting in that case? Did you say the transformation of a solid to a liquid? That's actually correct. Good job, you're a genius. Now well, let me just melt all of this for you. Now you can watch this transformation happen in action. See that? Now the gold is starting to overflow, so I will close it. This is 1,000. The melting or freezing point is 1,064 Celsius, degrees Celsius, 1,338 degrees, I mean 1,338 Kelvin, or 1,948 Fahrenheit for those who are living in America. Above that comes the boiling point, where the liquid turns into a gas. And we can call it boiling or evaporation. Those two are nearly the same. The higher the temperature, the bigger the state of matter. Gases can flow, you know that. And, I forgot to tell you this, they can be compressed into any size space. 
but the more compressed they are, the higher the temperature will be there. So if something like this were to exist, never touch it. It would be incredibly, insanely hot. Trust me. My computer is getting extremely hot from just rendering this. Oof. Anyhow, 2836 degrees Celsius is the boiling point for gold. But the thing that you need to know is water's boiling point and melting point. Watch, I'll just fill this entire thing up with ice. The melting point of water is zero degrees Celsius, 273 Kelvin, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The boiling point of water, though, is 100 degrees Celsius, 373 Kelvin, or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Sheesh, that's quite a lot to process. But anyhow, thanks for watching and I hope you had a nice time with me learning about the states of matter. Oh yeah, and one more thing. I like to fill this guy up with ice. You should probably try it, it's nice. But if you stay just keep waiting. If you kept watching until this point, thank God, you're actually good. Thanks for watching this video and supporting me. Anyways, see you in the next one. Bye.